Connects, where we want to help you take the Bible as you're reading it through kind of logically and help you understand where you're at in the scriptures and maybe give you some insight to some key concepts um, that you'll be reading this coming week. In the room, we have the whole pastoral staff. Don Myers is raising his hand and <laughs> to ask a question. It is a very Can unusual. Stop? <laughs> Don has to go to the bathroom. Raise his hand. <laughs> So we're now well, going to like take a pot. We're going to take a pot. My, my pie pie computer died right, right here. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I need my computer. I need my notes. Right no, you hey, don't need notes. Do, no, do we have? Listen, does you, anyone you have a it. new? No, we're good. No, Pastor. No, there's like a list of. There's like a list. Give your heart. Hide in your heart. Not in your heart. It's coming. It's the apple. It's coming to my heart. Why is there a bite out of the apple? What is the apple trying to tell us? on the Mac. Come on now. Let's just uh, let it go. Praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Henry. Twice you have <laughs> yeah, rescued me this morning. You just had this look of bewilderment. <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for something. Black screen. Black screen. <laughs> so, so in case you're wondering what happens <laughs> during the week at the church <laughs> when we have staff meetings and meetings we're trying to organize that is just a little 90-second snippet of about what happened. So we're here to help you understand God's <laughs> truth, God's wisdom, whether you hide it in your heart or you put it on your apple and have to pull it up with a power charge. Woo, uh, we we wanna, got it. We want to help you in your reading <laughs> today. So let me just refresh our memory on why the book of Proverbs was written. It, these are the words of Solomon. Um, and he says this. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. The purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to do them, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah. He wants, he's writing these down for our benefit. And if you apply these not only Proverbs, but the mega themes that run through, did you like that? Mega themes that run through the book of Proverbs, then you're certainly going to be wise. We're just going to go around the room and everybody's just going to put their toe into a proverb that just kind of step means something to them or just kind of jumps out at them. I'm going to start because in Proverbs chapter 1, it starts off where, and I've got to sneeze somewhere in this, we'll just keep everything rolling. But uh, wisdom, verse 20, shouts in the streets. This is a Hebrew, uh, wisdom doesn't literally shout, but it's a Hebrew literary style making wisdom come alive. It's a personification, we would probably say in our English, where it makes it come alive that says this is not old and archaic, dead, wasted, in the past stuff. This is live, active, real stuff for your life today. It shouts to us. It calls to us. God is saying, listen, and the wisdom that shouts to us is basically the personification of God's wisdom uh -huh. to us as communicated through the Proverbs. And he's saying, listen to me, for all of those who say that believe God is out there, there is a God somewhere, but I don't know if he's there because he doesn't choose to reveal himself, not so. Right. Proverbs says he screams to yeah. us. He shouts to us, I am here. I am present. He walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, laid down the law, gave wisdom, and yet in their foolishness they rebelled. But I'm so glad wisdom still shouts out to us today. Don's got one from Proverbs chapter 9 if he's powered up on the computer. Mm, we are powered up on the computer. And uh, with the whole theme, the overarching theme is definitely wisdom that we're walking through here in Proverbs. And I love the origin of wisdom because it's like if I, if I need to know where to go, for wise counsel, if I need to know where to go for a decision that needs to be made, I love that in Proverbs 9 and verse 10, it directs us clearly back to the Lord, to the Lord. And, and this is the fear of the Lord in verse 10 is the foundation of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. And that's... Um, I believe it helps us to understand this reverence, this respect, this honor with this word fear here 
It's not that we're to just shirk back in fear. Yes, we recognize his power. Yes, we recognize his sovereignty. Yes, we recognize his authority over us. But this fear of the Lord uh, falls into that reverence, respect, honor, that we revere the words of God, and they are wisdom for our life. And this is the beginning of wisdom, the foundation mm -hmm. of wisdom, this fear of the Lord. And then for the extra kicker at the end of that verse, and then knowledge of the Holy One, results in good judgment and so this yeah. is what it's like the bottom line is the lord's way is best i yeah. think is that's what right. it's a, proverbs is trying to give us so much is like mm -hmm. man god's way is best trust it young man trust it uh uh, he looked at me. He was about to say, "Oh, <laughs> no, I was <laughs> not." No, <laughs> no sir. No, sir. That is not video. true. <laughs> that is not wisdom, and it is not what was going through my brain. But tr right. but we are to trust it. We're to trust it. We're to trust it. You know the one the one aspect the Hebrew word the Hebrew language is rich, and there's depending on the verb stem, it's very complicated language, but it has different meanings with mm -hmm. different nuances. And one of the words I really love for fear is the word awe. Mm -hmm. And it's, yes. Yes. And it's yes. the word yes. awe that inspires yes. contemplation or yeah. thought. Mm -hmm. So astronomers look into the skies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah. why is that there? That's, good, That's yeah. awe. Yep. Yep. You know? And so we look into the heart of God and we go, mm -hmm. why is he like that? You know, mm -hmm. with, with awe, with fear, with reverence. Mm -hmm. um, a healthy respect for the power and authority. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said something really important, though. It, so, uh, wisdom takes as its foundation uh, God's will and that God is the ultimate authority. Because there's a contrast even in Scripture. Uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians, it talks about worldly wisdom, right. uh, mm -hmm. which doesn't consider God as its basis mm -hmm. and foundation. Mm -hmm. And it says worldly wisdom is foolishness. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's also, there's another place in Proverbs that doesn't come to my mind right now because I'm old as Dom is looking at no, it. No, so. <laughs> But not only is wisdom the foundation of the house, it is the house. Yeah. So God is the foundation of our life. Mm -hmm. He is our life. You know, it's yeah. not something we just check into on Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the very foundation um, of our life. Clayton's going to share something from Proverbs 13. Yeah, it's in Proverbs 13. It's a lot of other places in Proverbs 2, and I think it stands out because I need it. Um, <laughs> it is to listen more and to speak less. Yeah. Um, you see this, like I said, through many of the chapters, but just a couple verses in Proverbs 13. Uh, it says, People who despise advice are asking for trouble. Those who respect the command will succeed. The instruction of the wise is a life-giving fountain, and those who accept it avoid the snares of death. And like I said, you can go on and on and see more and more about how we are to accept correction. We are to accept wisdom. We are to look for wisdom. Um, and if we choose to reject it, we are going to end up in a world of trouble. And it also speaks about who we should be surrounding ourselves with and who we need to gain that advice from. It's not just anybody and everybody. Right. Uh, but if we look to verse 20 in that same chapter it says walk with the wise and become wiser associate with fools and get in trouble mm. and so while we definitely do need to do a better job of this and i'm talking to myself in this of, of listening more and speaking less we do at the same time have to seek out the right people to speak into our lives yeah mm -hmm. sure. super, so important. super important in uh, our growth as christians and believers yeah mm -hmm. yeah good good um, Proverbs 14, Emery will yeah. speak to that. I love how uh, the Proverbs are written sometimes very directly. Because sometimes I think as humans we need do very direct language. Yeah. So he, he, doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't make delicate words out of things sometimes. So, no. so in chapter 14, verse 15, it says, Only simpletons believe everything they're told. The prudent carefully consider their steps. So I, I think there's something this isn't, and then there's something this is. I don't think, when it says only simpletons believe everything they're told, I, I don't think that's a case for uh, being a conspiracy theorist. It doesn't say only simpletons believe anything they're told. It means yeah. to be discerning uh, about what you're told. But where I see this really relating to today is, we just have a tendency as a culture and as a people, I think all of us do, when someone says something, a prominent figure says something or it's on social media and it agrees with what we already think, 
Mm -hmm. uh, like we just let mm -hmm. go of our responsibility to fact check right. or, yeah. or think what it is. It's like now I can, yeah, he said that, and Feels I agree with it. So it's fact. And there's nothing more credibility damaging than to jump on something somebody said because it yeah. agreed with you. Well, and just because you agree with somebody doesn't make it a fact. Yeah, no, there are some things that... Uh, you can believe, if somebody says a lie and you believe it, that doesn't yeah. make the lie a fact. It, it doesn't, but sometimes we, we kind of react that way. Sure. And the truth is, I have things that I feel a certain way on, uh, and it's very easy to say, yeah. you know, so-and-so said this and that. But uh, instead of reacting in the moment emotionally because it agrees with you, we're called to respond by saying, even of the people that we look up to or even the people that, that we generally agree with, say, you know, is that really true before I, I go and put my name tag on that? Because mm -hmm. when something turns out not to be true, it kind of is a hit to your credibility. Yeah. And they've been in Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, 6. I've always loved this. Uh, it says, Train a child up in the way that they will go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Um, like Pastor said kind of at the beginning, we do have to remember that these aren't, this isn't like a clear-cut formula that doesn't mean if your child goes to church, therefore when they're out of your house, they're going to follow the Lord. Um, but I do think it's it's true still. I think when we train children up from the time that they're young in the ways of the Lord, in the ways of wisdom and righteousness, when they're old, they're not only going to know that, but then that desire to follow that's going to be even more evident. But I love that the word that it starts off with train. When I was when I was thinking about this, when I was thinking about this verse, I was talking to my wife and my aunts about the reason that I don't like Peloton very much and, and the reason that it just that it frustrates me so much right because well I think like there's two kinds of, of trainers and I think like there's one kind that's like yelling at you and telling you what to do <laughs> which is the way I feel about the Peloton people like, you're, just me, you're just telling me to go faster but I can't you don't understand I just can't you need an encouragement and then I, I, that's what I need that's what I need and then I, in college, I had a friend who trained me at the gym, and it was like, here, watch me do this, now you go do it. Now watch me do this, now you go do it. Mm. I think one of the, like, the rough parts to this verse is when we think about Solomon's children, um, next week we'll talk extensively that like he kind of failed as a father, and Rehoboam did not go in the ways of the Lord at all. And so I was like, I want to yeah. create that distinction between like what is just teaching wisdom mm -hmm. and what is really like training a child yeah. up in that mm -hmm. way. They should go walking alongside of them, modeling what to do. Um, and I think that's just important as we as we yeah. act around the younger generation beneath us and modeling that. That's yeah. good. That's good, Ben. The, the, go ahead. No, that's right. I was just going to throw one other, other little thing in there because that is spot on. Is that when you train your child up, you know, do it with passion. Mm -hmm. You know, people in this area are avid U of M fans, right? Michigan Wolverine fans in our in our area. Mm -hmm. Well, they were trained that, you know, yep. they got the T-shirts and stuff, but they saw dad or mom mm -hmm. or both actively engaged in cheering for them. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and there was this passion about it, and passion breeds the excitement. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, and, and you got to have both. You got to have mm -hmm. the understanding, the foundation, the wisdom part, but you also got to have the passion for it as yeah. well. So I appreciate that. I love that. that. I love that. There's a word that, um, that train or direct, the Hebrew word for that is a word that literally means palate of the mouth. And so midwives would take um, olive oil and they would rub it on a newborn to wet their appetite. Uh, uh -huh. To actually to be nourished, uh, and so that was the a uh, custom in their day. And so this word actually ties into that to say that by like Pastor was saying, by the way we live our lives as parents, mm -hmm. we're to wet the appetite, yeah, uh, right. just like those midwives did yeah. as they rubbed that olive oil on. So mm -hmm. that's what that word train actually means in the yeah. Hebrew. But and I think one of the hardest jobs of parenting uh, is consistency. Mm. Because it kind of speaks to to what you talked about. Yeah. That Solomon goes through for a long time, but in the end, he kind of he falls off the rails, and so for the last part of his life, he's kind of not modeling those things. And I think that maybe had a little bit to do yeah. with 
the future generations. It's a tough order. It's a tall order to be consistent mm -hmm. with your kids or even if you're a leader at work, anywhere to the people that are on your team, to be consistent and, and model that in season and out of season, year after year, uh, mm -hmm. because that, that's what it takes. Yeah. yeah. It says we're, t let me just take a little side note on parenting here because because uh, Ben See, brought up. A I started great it point. off without kids, and then I let all the dads actually. Correct. <laughs> 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 we didn't know if you were going to share any news or not. With us, but that's all right. So here, here's the thing: parents living that consistent life is tough. When you yeah, mess it's... up, you will mess up. Your kids know you messed up. Mm -hmm. You know you messed up. Be quick to apologize. Yeah, admit you messed up, and it's out. It's outside of your character to do that. Yeah. Hey, I didn't act like who I am or who I want to be today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, my dad didn't do it with me. Well, your dad was wrong, and let's do it right now in this generation. <laughs> that's good. You know. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I mean, that, I'm just yeah. saying that's just mm -hmm. that's the truth. You know, because it's you don't absolute. want to give the devil a foothold. No. And children can pick up on hypocrisy like that. Yeah. And so yeah. let's, let's be wise. Let me circle back to one of the themes of uh, a dominant theme of Proverbs is wisdom. And usually if there's a theme, a positive theme, it offsets a negative theme, in this mm -hmm. case, foolishness. Yeah. And so when I use that verse, he cry, you know, wisdom cries out in the streets. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's kind of a double entendre. It, it, it's certainly wisdom about not um, running around with, you know, salacious mm -hmm. women, having an affair, you know, mm -hmm. cheating on your spouse or, or uh, the act of marriage before marriage. It's also warning us not to commit adultery against the wisdom of God. Right. Yeah. Not to seek the foolish things of this world, not to court foolishness, mm -hmm. but to stand firmly with God in his, uh, in his wisdom. I and like the way that Solomon does that, though, because he does it all throughout Proverbs where he personifies, especially wisdom and foolishness. He yeah. just kind of shows the way that like Hebrews thought in, in pictures. And yeah. like, they didn't really think nearly as much like in linear thoughts and, and words, kind of like we do. And so sometimes it's really helpful to see that as a picture and makes it even more um, come alive a little bit differently in different scriptures. Yeah, yeah. so he starts out talking about a literal uh, immoral woman, uh -huh. and then he yep. goes and then characterizes uh, foolishness as, as that type of woman. And yeah. it's a, it becomes a metaphor. Right, right, right. And so as you read through, and all of this week, you're going to get a two-minute podcast yep. or less that will tell you one aspect of Proverbs, and it's got a lot of wisdom contained in it. Um, there, It is just rich. The book of James in the New Testament is its New Testament counterpart, yeah. and this is mm -hmm. a book you need to read over and over and over again. My favorite devotional time ever with my kids was uh, was a little devotional book that we use. It's called The Burbs, hmm. and it was a two-volume set, and it was just from the Proverbs, yeah. and you could take it as a parent any way you needed to go for that day, yeah, you know, <clears throat> because of the you know, of, of the wisdom and so just, practical. and it was, you know, colorful and the kids like looking at it and we'd act it out and do all kind of crazy stuff. But uh, the book of Proverbs, great book. Keep reading, be faithful. We're almost halfway through the first yeah. year mm -hmm. in our reading, uh, this year in our reading. So keep reading, be faithful. We'll see you Sunday.